The Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant has become yet a renewed concern for the fate of life on our planet, especially in the northern hemisphere, which is, of course, strongly affected by the wind patterns of whatever radiation might be released from Fukushima. In fact, some are claiming <clears throat> that uh, a very large amount of radiation has already been released. And by claiming, I say that with a bit of satire because, of course, it's happened. Multiple meltdowns already happened. And uh, the that the... That cover-up is being called Plume Gate. So just search that term if you want to learn more, Plume Gate. And now Senator Ron Wyden, who uh, actually is a, a pretty decent guy. I, I used to live in Oregon in his district when he was a congressman. And I'm, you know, I don't agree with all his politics, obviously, but uh, pretty decent guy. You know, really within the system, he tries to help people uh, more than most, I would say. And he went out and visited, uh, he went out and visited the Fukushima facility to have a look for himself. And when he came back, he issued an urgent warning. He, he put it right on his own website, the government website, con uh, Senate website. And he said that it is a precarious situation. And he said that the entire facility is only protected from a second tsunami by uh, something that he called the bags of rocks placed there, a, a makeshift wall, he said, made by uh, bags of rocks placed there by hand. That's not going to survive a tsunami. That's not going to stop a giant tidal wave coming in, not even a chance. Now, at the same time, a former Japan uh, ambassador has gone on the record and made a statement saying that, quote, the fate of the world depends on reactor number four. Those are his words. So there's been a lot of increasing concern about the fuel rod, the spent fuel rods that are in the pools that are now have open access to the environment and what might happen if there is a subsequent earthquake or a tsunami, which could happen theoretically at any time. It's, a, it's largely unpredictable. What will happen? And to help answer that question is Arnie Gunderson joining us today by Skype video, an amazing expert. He's been one of the most courageous scientific voices speaking out about the reality of what's happening in Fukushima, even as others try to cover up and downplay. Arnie Gunderson has been actually reporting the truth from his website, fairwinds.com. That's F-A-I-R-E, winds. Dot com. Did I get that right? Is that, the, is that the right website? You got it. Yeah, okay. All right. Arnie, thank you for joining us today. It's a pleasure to have you on the Alex Jones Show. How are you doing today? Hi, thanks for having me. I'm great. Well, it's, it's, it's an honor to have you on. You are one of the, the most widely known voices out there in the truth movement uh, uh, and also among the scientific followers of what's happening in Fukushima. Can you begin by telling us what is your understanding of the status, the current status of the situation in Fukushima, and in particular, reactor number four and its spent fuel rod pool. Um, yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head at the beginning of the hour here. The um, um, unit four is uh, has always been, uh, since the very first week or two of the accident, in my mind, the, the biggest concern. And, and the, the term I used a year ago was that if... Uh, the unit four fuel pool goals will have Chernobyl on steroids, and, and, and I still believe that today. The, the problem with that pool is that um, there's an entire nuclear core's worth of hot fuel, and by that I mean physically hot because it just ran, and four or five more years of spent fuel. Um, the combination means that if it were to go dry, that it would um, burn and liberating enormous amount of radiation. Um, Brookhaven National Lab said that uh, a, a fuel pool fire like could be experienced at, uh, at Fukushima Daiichi 4 would, um, would kill 186,000 people from cancer. Now, so, is, that, is that just a fire situation if the, let's say the pool, the, the containment concrete cracks, the water drains out, or, or another earthquake happens, it all collapses? Is it, is it a fire that releases that, or is there the possibility of it achieving, again, criticality or a, a meltdown scenario? Um, no, it can't. Yeah, low enriched fuel, like in a power reactor, has to have water around it to have a fission. To, to you know, for for a chain reaction to occur. Now, what would happen um, if you know? What I'm postulating is if there's a if there's a seven seven five earthquake and the pool cracks or the building topples, but let's say the pool cracks, um, the pool runs dry, the zircaloid clad it would become hot enough to burn in air, and and it's called a pyrophoric reaction. The um, um, once it starts, you can't put it out by throwing water on it. 
because it takes the oxygen out of the water and just gets hotter. So this would be like a massive dirty bomb essentially being set off and it would just burn and release into the atmosphere and then the wind takes it from there, is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's a great analogy. So uh, if, let me ask you this, if a terrorist group had this much nuclear material in their hands, uh, how do you think America's response would be different? Because I find it interesting that this is essentially a dirty bomb, a ticking time dirty bomb, and uh, America's doing essentially nothing. But if a terrorist had this much material, how bad would that be, Arnie? You know, we've been saying that here in the States, and you know, I'm on record as saying that this type of reactor, this Mark I reactor, you know, this fuel pole is up in the air uh, about a, 100 feet high, and it, it's a terrorist target. And, and th this isn't since Fukushima. This, I've been saying this for 10 years. The, uh, um, the problem is if a terrorist were to broach the side of the, um, uh, of the fuel pool with you know, some kind of a, a, a guided weapon, not, not a rifle. But like an RPG you know, or something like that. Yeah. Uh, that that um, you would drain the pool here in the States. Um, and, uh, I, and, and it would create the same scenario. So this isn't something that the NRC and the nuclear community hasn't heard. They've just ignored it. What's, this, what's the deal with the other pool of stored fuel rods that's located reportedly about 50 meters away from this reactor number four pool? What's, what's the interaction between those two pools? The, um, uh, the Japanese, unlike the Americans, have kept all their nuclear fuel in the fuel pool. Uh, you know, so you've got a plant like Pilgrim, Pilgrim with 37 years worth, whereas Fukushima only has seven or eight. Um, the Japanese took the fuel down out of these precarious pools when they got to five, six, seven years and put them in a common pool. So they have an enormous common pool, but it's at grade level. Uh, so from a seismic standpoint, it's much more rigid. The, the, the Fukushima 4 pool is way up in the air, so it's like an upside-down pendulum in the event of an accident. My, you know, in addition to Unit 4, and, and I'm clearly on record as saying both these, uh, Unit 3 is not much better. So there's actually two fuel pools that could, um, that, that could cause, you know, uh, certainly a, the, the, the evacuation of Tokyo would be plausible if that pool were to, um, uh, were to catch fire. What about the evacuation of California? Would it, it would, how much of a concern would it be if that pool, the, if the fuel rods in pool four caught on fire, and that, that radiation was released, and all the isotopes, the iodine-131, the cesium-137, I think is a bigger concern. Uh, how, what, in your estimation, what is the range of possibilities of impacts on states like California, Oregon, uh, Alaska, Washington, especially West Coast, USA? Yeah, well, first off, you're not going to find any iodine because that only has an eight-day half-life. So it's been gone for years. But the, the amount of cesium in those pools is roughly comparable to what's gone up in nuclear weapons testing, above ground nuclear weapons testing for the, you know, for, for 30 years. Um, my, my, I'm telling my friends that on the West Coast, you got to watch it like a hawk every day, go up and make sure Unit 4 is standing. And if it's not, um, you know, we'll, we'll watch the plume, but, but have, a, have a plan B to, um, uh, you know, to move somewhere. Well, that's great advice, Arnie, and I want to encourage uh, viewers and listeners to visit your website, fairwinds.com. Again, that's spelled F-A-I-R-E, fair, almost fairywinds.com <laughs> might be the, 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 the ph phonetic way to say it. But the, the, the problem with what you just said, or I should say the challenge, is that the mainstream media has already demonstrated it's going to lie about this. So if the average person out there in California, let's say, says, well, I'm going to watch CNN and I'm going to wait for CNN to tell me whether or not there's been a, a, a big release of radiation from Fukushima, isn't it possible that CNN may just never cover it or they may downplay it or the, the, the U.S. government may come up with some kind of weird cover story? It, hasn't the truth already been manipulated so much that we can't really trust the media to tell us the future of what's going on there? Well, I, I, I don't trust the mainstream media. Uh, actually, though, I mean, CNN had me on 20 times, so I probably they've done better than most of the others. Oh, I wasn't aware of that. That's actually to their credit to, to have you on then. <laughs> well, thank you. But, uh, but you're absolutely right. The mainstream media has underplayed the Fukushima disaster, of, you know, since, since it began. Um, and, uh, you know, it's through alternative shows like yours. It's through alternative sites like mine. 
um, that, that people are getting the, the knowledge that experts have. You know, all the things I've been saying for the last year are turning up in FOIA requests from the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. They were thinking it. They just weren't telling the public. <laughs> right. You nailed it. The FOIA requests have revealed a lot of interesting information where wasn't one of the documents from the NRC showing that by their calculations they had already estimated that eight was it 18,000 uh, infant deaths had occurred in the USA due to the radiation? Or am I getting that right? I don't remember seeing that one, but there were so many that were terrifying. You know, they, they had data from the roof of the embassy in Tokyo in the first week that was terrifying, and yet they never made that, that information public. We had a, um, a businessman in Tokyo who was staying on the same block as the U.S. Embassy um, take a sample from the roof of his hotel, and, and it was harder than a pistol. And this was six months after the accident. So um, you know, we have known that Tokyo was jeopardized at the beginning of this accident since it was happening and really didn't do much to, um, uh, to warn the citizens. Wow, for those watching PrisonPlanet.tv, they just showed the footage of one of the explosions of one of the reactors. I don't Was that reactor number two that uh, was being shown? I don't know. But uh, it, it looks like a massive explosion. Some There's been conjecture that perhaps it was a, a nuclear explosion. I'm not, I'm not sure. Uh, what are your thoughts on that, Arnie? Yeah, the, it, um, it was a prompt, moderated criticality. <laughs> okay, you're going to have to break that down for us all. <laughs> well, um, a bomb is a prompt, fast criticality. Uh, a nuclear reactor is usually never prompt. Um, <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'll be... This could take an hour, but I'll try to knock it out in 30 seconds. Well, imagine like all, all the power that would power the city of Tokyo for 10 years being released in two seconds is what kind of what you're getting at. Well, that, that's what a bomb is, right? Um, if your readers want to go, your, your listeners want to go up and watch this, you can see that we tested this 40 years ago in an experiment called Borax, B-O-R-A-X, just like the, the, the 20 mules. Um, the uh, borax experiments look almost exactly like the explosion at Fukushima Unit 3. And those were prompt, moderated criticalities. Okay, so it's not, not the same as a detonation of a nuclear warhead, obviously, but it's certainly a much faster release than was planned by the engineers who built the facility. Now, one of the things I really respect about you, Arnie, is that you visited Japan. You took some soil samples, and I believe on your website, fairwinds.com, you even mentioned that in the United States, those soil samples, they are so contaminated with radiation that they would be considered, what What was the term you used? Oh, they'd be considered radioactive waste, and they'd have to be, you know, stored in a, in a controlled facility, yeah. So that soil, how far out from Fukushima did you sample that soil? Well, you know, that's the point I was trying to make in the video. Uh, Tokyo is, uh, depending on where you are, 150 miles uh, away from, uh, from the accident, and, and yet... I mean, these people were gardening in soil that was, in the States, you know, would be considered radioactive waste. And wow. when I, was, I, I shot the video when I was at a meeting in Washington, D.C., and my point was Tokyo is the capital of Japan, and um, within, 50, within 100 miles of Washington are a dozen nuclear reactors. How would we feel if, if our capital was so contaminated that it should be considered nuclear waste. I think the public reaction would be dramatic. You know, we've got to shut these things down, whereas because it's happened in the other guy's country, um, mainstream media has totally ignored it. But you hit on something really crucial right there. You said that the soils are so contaminated, and that was with, with cesium-137, correct? Cesium-137 and 134. That's how you know it came from Fukushima. If it was just cesium-137... It could be bomb, it could be Chernobyl, but when you see 134 and 137 together, that's the signature from Fukushima.